All right, what's on the bench? Uh, this is a tiny Faraday cage. I would like a bigger one, but this one was given to me, so um, I figured it's time to put it to use. Um, and not that I have a real use for it, but I want to use it as a teaching tool. And so I did a couple things to it. I put, um, I put some feed through capacitors uh, for some uh, voltage rails and they come, they come into the uh, part. I put a floor in it. It had some built-in standoffs and I put a little floor here to, so I can put things in there like a, like a, a test circuit, I could, I could put that in there. Uh, it does have some uh, uh, SMA connectors to send signals in and out. All right. And uh, the way that it works is you have this lid and uh, it has these a whole bunch of screws, these M3 screws. And uh, I found that the reason that I haven't really touched this box after I got it was I just wanted, I didn't want to put up with those screws, taking the screws in and out and in and out, in and out. Just, it just wasn't going to fly. All right. So I thought, well, maybe I can get some little latches to put on the side, little, little flippy latches. They're kind of called toggle latches. And I noticed that on the side, there's some holes drilled in it. It's like they had the same idea. I don't know which latch they had in mind, but anyway, that's, that's there. So um, you need to have a good RF connection everywhere. You need a solid shield. And so there's this RF grommeting stuff, this RF uh, uh, shielding uh, conductor. And it's, it's uh, like a uh, wire woven and it, th this has a sponge inside. And so when you put it on, you can see it doesn't, it doesn't go down. You have to, you have to squish it down because it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's conformal foam, right? And just to show you that it is conductive, I think you can hear this. Uh, so you can see that uh, if I touch the uh, uh, grommet, it's making conduction. Here's another piece of uh, grommet for the, some other boxes. And so it just comes in different shapes and sizes. This kind of has like a rubber, a rubber O-ring type of thing inside and, and a wire around it. Okay, so um, what I did was I took a couple M3 screws and cut them off and I'm gonna use them as registration pins. So when I put the top on, now it's registered to these two, to these two holes, okay? And then I need to then get my uh, latches. I got some latches on order. I don't know if they're going to work, but I do have some latches on order. But in the meantime, I've got this, which is heavy. <laughs> and it's heavy enough to push down the lid. So this is my new uh, easy, uh, easy open uh, device. It even hogged out the metal on this thing. Anyway, so uh, the demo I'm going to do today is I'm going to... Well, use one of the use one of the connectors, and I'm going to put a little rubber duck antenna on it. Okay, I'm going to put an antenna here. So if there's any RF, it will it will listen to it at least to the frequencies this this particular antenna is good for. Um, and then let me connect a spectrum analyzer to the antenna. All right, and uh, so we can see up here uh, we have we have a bunch of uh, things going on, and that is just ambient. Okay, if I do a uh, max hold on that trace, it's just going to remember everything that happens, um, and those are your fictitious signals. If you're trying to measure something, then you might see something just because it comes and some of them only come once in a while and you um, need to eliminate that, right? All right, so if I, uh, let's see here, amplitude, we have the preamp on, zero attenuation. So it's as sensitive as it can be right now. All right, and uh, let's see if I back up. 
I think you can still see it back there. All right, so if I take my lid and I throw my lid on top, uh, everything goes away, right? I'll put my big weight, put my big weight on it. And you can see now that we have a, a perfectly flat line and uh, it is very, very quiet inside, all right? So let's go ahead and see if we can't uh, put that to use. Let's say we want to measure how much, um, how much noise this circuit is producing, all right? And yes, this isn't accurate and this isn't, you know, there's a whole bunch of, this is just a proof of concept, okay? So don't be too hard on me. All right, so uh, we're going to connect these uh, five volt and ground to the circuit. That's what it needs, all right? And uh, we have uh, uh, a bunch of uh, noise occurring, all right? And uh, let's go ahead and uh, put the uh, cover on. All right, and there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and find five volts and power up our circuit. That's ground, a adding ground doesn't do anything to it. And then adding five volts, there we go. So that that is due just to our, uh, just due, our due to our circuit. You can see this funny thing is going on in that circuit too. So um, sometimes it's real broad band, sometimes it's cleaner. Um, it is, uh, it's not too important what the circuit is, but it is a, a digital logic tip chip being used in its analog region to be an oscillator. And it's not a Schmidt trigger. And so sometimes it's operating well but sometimes it's operating in its intermediate zone where it starts to conduct current and it doesn't switch quite correctly and everything. And that's when you start get, getting all of that noise. All right. If you saw all of that noise, you might think, ah, you might think, oh, there's something to do in the environment, right? Let me disconnect the power. You can see that, there, that nothing, the, the ambient didn't have anything to do with it, right? All right, so let's go ahead and do a uh, uh, trace max hold. So this is what our this is what our circuit's doing. Okay, and then let's go get an uh, active one. Okay, now I'm going to take now I'm going to take the lid off, and you can see the difference between uh, what we had and now what we have, let me turn uh, max hold on that. So uh, it starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So you can see that there actually are some places that uh, are similar because it's our circuit, but it's plus ambient, okay? It's adding to the ambient. Um, so there is some baseline noise and then that moves your whole reference up. So that's once again why you want to put it in a put it in a Faraday cage. All right, let's clear this. Let's turn off the uh, actual circuit. And again, that is the extra noise that's uh, coming along. You can see that we happen to have some radio stations and stuff in here. Uh, if we turn the marker on, I believe that's the broadcast bin. Uh, no, that's a television station, 512 megahertz, that region. So there's something, something broadcasting there. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's, um, it's quite, quite large here. And, uh, that also is probably due to this antenna that I'm using also is only susceptible to certain frequencies. It's like a 144 megahertz antenna. So it's going to, if I touch it, you can see that we can see a lot more low frequency stuff because my uh, hand is a better antenna at the low frequency stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, zoom in here. Let me see here, trace. Clear right, clear right. Okay, let me do a frequency stop. That was going up to three three gigahertz. So let's do the stop at one gigahertz. So we'll be able to see.
we'll be able to see things better. This is our background. And then if I turn on the circuit, the circuit adds all of that stuff. And then if I put on the lid, yeah, not big, not big, not big, that big of a difference, but here's, here's without the lid, here's with the lid, and here's circuit on. So that's all due, that's all due to our circuit. All right, just a quick little video to show you some concepts. Um, you can go the opposite. You can inject signals uh, into the box and see if your if your if your circuit is susceptible to things like that. Um, it would be nice to have a broadband antenna um, in here of some type. Um, maybe you can comment below if you can think of a uh, a tiny tiny broadband antenna that would pick up more low frequencies than this little thing. Maybe even a loop antenna in there or something might be, might be better than what I have. I haven't really thought it through. All right, there you go.